You know the iconic Hotel Cecil sign that's on the building? It's been there for like 100 years. This is what it looks like now. People are pissed. If you go to Google and type in Hotel Cecil sign, you'll see right now there are loads of articles and forums and like Facebook groups about how pissed everyone is that they painted over it because technically it's a historical landmark. So how can they get away with this? And why is it a big deal? We need to zoom out to understand it all because it's a lot. So here's a timeline of the main events. The hotel was built in 1924 and it was known to be glamorous, especially for its time. That's why to this day, there's like the gold trim, the lobby looks beautiful and grand, but I mean, you get to the rooms and it's like a dungeon. <laughs> in 1929, when the Great Depression happened, this area turned poor and dangerous. So that's kind of like the start of what we know of Skid Row. Then for like the next seven or eight decades, hundreds of deaths, serial killers, people would come to this hotel to end their life. So after like 80 years of that, obviously sales weren't great, so they opened Stay on Main, which is a separate hotel within the hotel to try and get away from the bad stigma. And it fooled a lot of people, including Elisa Lamb, which, you know, was the girl found in the water tank. After that, they were pretty much just fucked with that too. Then in 2014, a for-profit company bought the building and they had plans to gut the building inside it out and make it super trendy with a rooftop pool and bar. Then in 2017, the owner registered the building as a historical landmark and then shut down the building entirely. So at this point, the hotel completely closed. In 2020, when the pandemic started, the hotel entered an agreement with the Skid Row Housing Trust, which would save them about $225 million to restore the building through an adaptive reuse process, which means they were trying to legally turn the hotel into apartments. But the trade-off was that they had to preserve the historical landmarks, which means the owner couldn't gut the hotel anymore like he wanted to when he bought it. Then in 2021, they granted Discovery Channel and Netflix to do segments on the hotel, which makes you wonder why, because they had said no for eight years before that. Then in January, 2022, the building reopened as Hotel Cecil Apartments, only for the low income. No one from the general public is allowed entry. Which leads us to today, the historical Hotel Cecil sign is replaced with ads. So that's the general timeline. And I won't go into my thoughts of their intentions over the last few years because I literally just broke that down in my last Hotel Cecil video. So you can just watch that if you want. But long story short, I believe it was too financially risky for them to try and open the hotel publicly, which is why they made it into housing for the low income. Not only was it a guaranteed profit, but it was also like way less work. And the main thing I think is they don't have to worry about trying to rebrand this hotel and questionable guests running out rooms like they've had for the last hundred years. So theoretically now they wouldn't have to worry about what, what other people thought of the hotel anymore. So to tie that all back to the sign, I think that everything that they're doing is a cash grab. So the sign is just another example of that in my opinion. And I don't think it's an accident that they made the new sign like white on white, so it's kind of hard to read. It's a lot smaller. And it used to be on the left section, but they moved the sign to the right section. And I think they did that because it's more covered by tall structures. And then they painted two Postmates ads on the middle and left sections, which by the way, it was terrible for me since I'd wake up every morning looking at a hamburger and spend like hundreds of dollars on Postmates in a week. But the point is, <laughs> that's illegal, what they did, right? Well, that's when things get a little confusing. I haven't seen anybody talk about this, and I don't know if it's because it's not online. I tried to look for it and I couldn't find it, but somebody that I know who works in the company that helped redevelop this building actually showed me that in 2018, they got a permit and approved to redo the sign. And 2018 was a year after it technically became a historical landmark. So they were approved to redo the sign and other historical parts of the building. It says, the existing painted sign on the south elevation will be repainted in the same size wording to be determined. But the thing is, they hadn't entered their adaptive reuse deal with the Skid Row Housing Trust. So this is where things get a little gray. The laws between apartments and hotels are very different. So yeah, if the hotel was gonna be just an up and running hotel like he had planned when he submitted that form to get the sign redone, then it wouldn't have been a problem. But now this is where things are a little tricky because either they found some sort of loophole through the adaptive reuse contract or they're just wrong and it's illegal or it's right. And we don't know the terms and specifics of the rehabilitation deal. So we really don't know enough information. If they were right, they were super smart and they're gonna make a shit ton of money on those ads. But if they were wrong and they actually did break the law, then they could be fined up to $5 million, which is what I've seen online and have heard. But honestly, $5 million is, I think, still worth it when you're making up to like $100,000 a month on these ads, at least. And if the timing and contracts caused a loophole, then they still end up on top. So really, it's just a smart move all around. With all this income they're getting, like from all these different avenues, it's probably the most money the building has ever seen in its history, which is insane to think about. So maybe now they can buy more cameras and more security so that 
you know, things don't happen, which I don't know why they don't, because since people started moving in, I've seen some questionable things. Almost every week, there's just another ambulance, or the block is shut down, or there's like a million fire trucks, or they're doing something in there that's like really strange. And I live in downtown LA. I mean, there are millions of hotels nearby and apartments, and I don't know why it's just like the Cecil. <laughs> so I think it would make sense for them to invest some of the profits into like more cameras and stuff. And I'm sorry, but haunted or not, this building's had like a lot of bad things that have happened inside of it. And now that it's just a Skid Row housing facility, I feel like they should at least like block off the emergency exits or the ladder where Lisa Lamb climbed or like maybe not have the windows so low to the ground. Like maybe, you know, make them less... <laughs> just jumpable. Is that even a word? I don't know. I mean, especially because they talk about all the time how happy they are to help those in need, but like, I don't know. I feel like their actions speak otherwise. Um, especially when I'm seeing things like a guy walking up to the roof trying to take a Lisa Lamb's path. And the funny thing is somebody from the company actually saw me post it and DM'd me and asked me if, if I had any more footage of the situation because they didn't have the cameras or the security to do it themselves. So they're relying on me, even though clearly they hate me. Um, and so I'm just kind of like, okay, why don't you just like use the money that you're getting to install more cameras or get more security or like maybe just lock up the emergency exits? I don't know, like maybe just put a padlock on or like maybe just take the ladder down. Crazy ideas? I don't know, maybe they can't. I, I don't know. It just feels like one of those bare minimum situations, which again leads me to believe that it's for the money and they don't really care. But anyways, moral of the story, they wouldn't have needed me if they had just had more cameras or more security. But I really was glad to help, you know, keep your friends close and enemies closer. <laughs> no, I really was glad to help. The last thing I wanted to talk about were my predictions, because um, I thought of this like the other night. So there are like these storefronts that are at the bottom of the Hotel Cecil and they were kind of like separate businesses or they used to be for like 80 years. There's just different people, you know, renting out that space, which was kind of detached from the hotel, but obviously still in there. So my prediction is since there are still so many like Hotel Cecil fans coming to check out the hotel, like at all times of the day, especially the weekends or like cars lined up still, people are still like doing TikToks <laughs> like in front of the hotel and like going around and shining their lights on it and like doing like ghost sticks and I like how I do paranormal videos and I still have no idea like what I'm talking about. I'm like the sticks, but I, I like see people out there basically like being avid Hotel Cecil fans. So point being, there's still like a lot of traffic right in front of the hotel. It wouldn't surprise me if they ended up using those separate little like rooms for memorabilia or like a museum or like a cafe and kind of just play into the whole Hotel Cecil, like maybe they have merch. I don't know if that's legal, I don't know if they're allowed to, but I could totally see them doing that. And honestly, that would be smart if they could figure that out legally. I mean, or illegally, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, those are the updates. I'm also releasing a book, Little Imperfections, A Tall Tale of Growing Up Different. I put it right here to remind me. Um, this is obviously the proof, um, and it's for the hardback version, but this is... Bye, have a great time.